Hey everybody, good to see you again. I'm back. It's been a long time. There are some reasons for that and that's probably its own video in and of itself. I've got a lot of new stuff that I'm working on videos of. For example, I'm shooting this on a brand new Fuji X-H 2S uh, in 6K OpenGate ProRes with Siru Anamorphic and Anamorphic Adapter. Wow, that was a mouthful. Um, looks pretty cool. It finally took the edge off the Siru lenses being too sharp, but we're not talking about that today. We're going to talk about timecode boxes because I've seen this popping up in forums and stuff as of late. And so let's talk about, you know, the first one, the new kid on the block, that is a Deity timecode boxes. They're small, they're compact. Yes, the battery really does run 24 hours. The app is really good. I mean, they're really good units, but are they accurate? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that's to take something like my old, reliable, trusty, upside-down Tanaki and lock them up and see how that works. And, oh, why don't we throw in a Tanakal, because these are really popular out there. And I got a few other things because if we're going to go through setting this stuff up, we might as well do everything. So I've got my Sound Devices 833 with an ambient timecode generator, which I also consider to be a exceptionally good generator, as good as a Danaki's. And I've got a couple cameras. And the cameras are an interesting part because people have tended to look at cameras and say, well, their timecode generators aren't accurate, or they drift, or they garbage, or what? Well, my experience has been both. So at least in, for this video and this test purpose, I'm looking at a Canon C300 Mark II and a C300 Mark III. And I wanna see how they play out. Um, are they accurate? Do they drift? What's their deal? Um, can you trust them or not? So let's just get right into that test. So the first thing I did was to just kind of arbitrarily decide that the sound device's ambient timecode generator should be my master. And while it wasn't totally arbitrary, because one of the features of the sound devices and the Danaki boxes is that on both of them, you can input timecode once it's set and see what the difference is between the two. And I use this function to check everything out throughout the rest of the test. So the first thing I did after I locked all the boxes up was to just read them back and see if they had locked correctly. And, you know, hundredth of a frame, that doesn't matter. But the cameras actually showed a more interesting difference. And my supposition here is there's a certain amount of processing delays that go on when the camera gets the image off the sensor, processes it, and sends it out the back of the camera. It's just kind of compensating for that processing delay. The real question is, what does this offset look like, say, five hours in, 10 hours in, or longer? Does the offset stay constant, or do the timecode generators in the cameras drift around? Well, the answer is they did drift around more than the independent timecode boxes. I suppose what's interesting here is to see that the C300 Mark II actually has a very stable generator, even though it drifted a bit differently than expected. But what's weird is that the C300 Mark III, which is the newer camera, actually seemed to have a less stable clock. I'm not quite sure what's up with that. Now, I also want to say I did do this test a couple of times, but obviously when it takes all day to do this and you got to plug your cameras into AC power supplies and everything else, doing these tests is inconvenient and time consuming, especially if you need to try and run out and do things like real work. One more interesting test. I did a battery change to see if the cameras would have any significant jumper change in time code. And guess what? No. You can certainly at least leave these particular cameras powered off for five or 10 seconds and swap batteries around and the time code picks up one or two hundredths of a frame different or something. It's not enough to worry about. So certainly changing batteries and keeping time code with the Canon cameras worked okay. That was some rather undramatic results, wasn't it? I mean, basically, they're all good. I, I mean, imagine that. All your gear is good. You don't have any real junk or stinkers in there. Uh, the Deity certainly being the cheapest and maybe possibly the most accurate um, is pretty amazing, but that's technology, and technology gets better over the years. I mean, it's tough to compare a box that's based on tech that's eight, five, six, seven, eight years old with something that's brand new.
So that's all good news. So the cameras are kind of interesting because they had an offset. As long as that offset stays consistent, it's not really a big deal to compensate for. If you know, for example, that you've got a half frame uh, offset, well, you're probably never actually going to see that most of the time in any editing situations. If it finally got to the point of one frame, okay, it's a frame, nudge it over a frame, no big deal. The accuracy of these cameras is actually pretty good, at least the ones I tested. And the biggest thing that I can say is if you're working with a particular camera, uh, do a test. Take a known good accurate time code box, these deities are perfectly good, and run the test. There you go, a lot of good news with all these time code generators that basically they're all good. See you guys next time. I have a bunch of new videos in the works. Like, subscribe, you know the deal. And uh, we'll see you soon.